The energy that supports life on Earth and creates the climate in which we thrive comes from the sun. All of the energy Earth receives from the sun enters at the top of the atmosphere. If we call this 100% of the energy available from the sun, we can track amounts of energy that flow through the Earth atmosphere system. Much of this energy is high frequency, short wavelength radiation and it does not interact with the atmosphere, so that just over half, that is 54%, reaches the Earth's surface. Some of the energy that reaches the surface reflects back without being absorbed. The rest, 47% of the total amount of energy we receive from the sun is absorbed by the Earth. This 47% is important because it is the energy that drives our climate. Of the fraction that does not reach the surface, about half, 23% of the total, is absorbed by the atmosphere. The other half reflects right back out into space. This means that 30% of the energy that enters the atmosphere reflects back out without being absorbed. Once absorbed, energy can be transferred back and forth between the Earth and the atmosphere more than once before finally radiating back into space. Most of the energy that fluxes between the Earth and the atmosphere moves as long wavelength relatively low frequency radiation, but a small amount, about 5% of the total that enters at the top, is transferred directly from the Earth to the atmosphere as thermal energy. About 23% moves into the atmosphere as latent heat through the evaporation of water. When this water vapor condenses and falls as rain, the condensation process transfers energy from the water to the atmosphere. So the water returns to the Earth, but the energy stays in the atmosphere. About 12% of the radiation the Earth's surface emits passes right through the atmosphere without interacting with any matter. The rest is absorbed by molecules in the atmosphere. At any given time, the Earth is radiating slightly more energy to the atmosphere than is entering at the top. The Earth can radiate this much energy because some of the energy captured by the atmosphere from the Earth is radiated back to the Earth. This exchange back and forth between the Earth and the atmosphere allows the total fluxes to add up to more than entered the system in the first place. In addition to exchanging energy back and forth with the Earth, the energy absorbed by molecules in the atmosphere also radiate some of that energy back out into space completing the cycle. While the total amount of energy flowing back and forth between different parts of the Earth system does not need to add up to the initial 100% entering at the top, the amount leaving at the top of the atmosphere, this includes the 30% that is reflected, the 12% that passes through the atmosphere from the Earth without interacting with the atmosphere, and the 58% that is radiated from the atmosphere to space are equal to the initial 100%. This puts the system in balance with as much energy leaving as entering over time. The large constant exchange back and forth between the Earth's surface and the atmosphere is what keeps our climate within the range that supports life and is dependent on the presence of gases such as carbon dioxide and water vapor in the atmosphere to absorb the energy radiating from the Earth. Without carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, more energy would radiate right back into space and the Earth would be a much colder place. Showing these numbers as percents makes them easier to compare, but it obscures the actual amounts of energy involved. The paper this figure is drawn from, Trenberth et al. 2009, report the data in units of watts per square meter, where a watt is equal to a joule per second. This paper estimates that on average about 341 watts fall on every square meter of Earth. Given the surface area of the outer atmosphere, this means there are about 6.8 times 10 to the 17 joules hitting the planet every second. That is a 68 followed by 16 zeros. This is equal to 2.2 times 10 to the 25 joules per year. For context, it's estimated that humans use a little under 6 times 10 to the 20 joules of energy per year, meaning that the sun delivers more than 35,000 times the energy we consume per year in our highly industrialized society. Of course, this 341 watts per square meter is an average. In reality, this energy is unevenly distributed over both space and time. Patterns in where and when solar energy falls on the Earth create variations in climate and the different ecosystems found across the globe.